Hi, Jules. Good to be with you here. Good morning, Jenna. I know you're an improviser and one of the UK's leading improvisers. Can you can you tell us a bit more about what what you do, what you do with people? Huh. Um, that should be the question I have an immediate response to. Um, but it's kind of a difficult one. When, when you're so far sunk in it, it's difficult to explain the, the headline stuff. Um, improv is uh, unscripted comedy on unscripted theatre. So the uh, the first... The, the root of, uh, of the whole thing, I guess, is a theatre in which a group of people uh, come on stage and they don't know the story they're going to tell, the scenes they're going to play, the characters they're going to play. And, um, and from there they create uh, songs and stories and all of the things that you might see in a play or in a film um, but without a script. And uh, I, I came to this through... Um, I was at drama school and we had improvisation lessons and I, I hated them not because they were run badly, they were run very well, um, but because they gave me a huge sense of inadequacy and panic and being unable to cope with that kind of un, unstructured, unscripted environment. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that because a lot of, about, about a third of what I do is making shows and directing shows and being in shows, about a third of what I do, and the other two thirds of what I do is teaching uh, both members of the public and people in a uh, corporate or educational context, some of the skills of improvisation that have applications outside of life. And um, one of the things, um, we're talking about improvisation in a kind of uh, spiritual context, one of the things about meditation, which I find so uh, extraordinary is this idea, I forget where I first heard it, but it's a fairly commonly said thing that after a while, nothing falls outside the practice of, of meditation. So there's the time when you are sitting, there's the time when you are meditating, um, but that those uh, attitudes and ways of approaching the world spread out to encompass your entire life. And that, for me, um, is, what, is why uh, improvisationally, I don't just try to make shows and make a, a career in that way. I'm also very, very passionate about giving the opportunities to other people to experience those things, um, whether they go on to do shows or, or not. So yeah, about a third of my time I spend uh, making shows, about a third of my time I spend teaching public classes and about a third of my time in an applied, applied context. Great, thank you. I really love what you say about the, <clears throat> that sense of spiritual practice then be mm -hmm. becoming the, the bedrock as it were of, of our lives and that, that's also been my experience that once we have that basic notion of of being aware of what's here we can be aware of whatever's going on can't we that but it's not just something that we do when we sit in these particular times or or places and i was also struck by what you said about your own experience your own initial experience of um, improvisation because it seems to me that those feelings in, of inadequacy and so on are often present in our daily lives aren't they? Oh, absolutely, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. because daily life as we know is also unscripted isn't it you know we've got no idea what's coming next we have those sorts of um, feelings of inadequacy or our own deficiency what's your sense of how improvisation um, builds our capacity to, to be in the moment? Uh, to me, I don't think of it as, as building, but as releasing. Um, uh -huh, nice. I think the, the idea of uh, inadequacy or not living up to something involves there being something <laughs> up to which we have to live, if I can twist my sentence structure around a little bit. And uh, I think that's a very... It's a very Western idea, it's a very Protestant idea, it's shot through our entire educational system that there are standards which we should accomplish, there are standards which we should hit. You're an A-grade student, a B-grade student, you pass or fail. Um, I'm from one of the counties that still has, um, uh, what are they called, grammar school tests, 11 Oh plus yeah, me too. Things. Um, so I'm from Kent, and uh, that's such an early point to be able to say to children, and quite young children, uh, you are or you are not enough. And for me, building, it's not about building the capacity, it's about releasing, releasing the, the idea that each moment, interaction, part of your life has certain things which need to be accomplished. Um, and I think that uh, that 
I'm now I'm finding it hard not to return it to the vocabulary of ability, but the ability to stay present with the people, with the activity, with the um, with what is going on. If you, if you are doing that, then you can't fail. It's like the idea in, in, in science: there's no failed experiment. Um, if you get an, if you have an experiment and you don't get the re result that you expected, then you just have more information. And I think that that's uh, absolutely true of improvisation. There's no, there's nothing to get right. There's nothing to get wrong. There's what you can do is release that level of sort of meta thought or meta conversation, which can turn an experience from being an experience into uh, a negative reflection on what you ex wish the experience might have been. It's the it's, it's such a cliche at the moment, but people going to a concert and then spending the whole time filming it on their phones. That's a, you know, that's a <laughs> yeah. You sound like a grouchy old man example, but it's that kind of area. Yeah, I love what you say about actually being in the experience. In a in a in a sense, it's in a more raw, visceral form, isn't it? Absolutely. Without that, without that super ego layer, that meta layer that critiques, that criticizes, that mm -hmm. judges, good, bad, enough, not enough. And my sense of spiritual practice is that it can also fall into either of those two camps, you know, that we can be fixed on reaching some ideal of what we think spiritual or even awakened or enlightened might look like, mm. which is inevitably some sort of fantasy. And we can judge, judge ourselves on passing or failing that, usually failing, of course. Or, or we can grasp what I feel is the, is the much deeper practice of, of spirituality which is about fully being ourselves I mean in a sense it is discovering ourselves and the moment anew each time isn't it without absolutely without that measuring going on and it's a constant um the the idea that there is a, a final state of enlightenment spirituality or whatever you want to call it to be attained is um I, I, I I don't know a huge amount about um, Buddhist practice. I wouldn't want to speak to that, but it it's deeply rooted in uh, Western story structure, the Aristotelian 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 um, story structure by which uh, uh, a hero or heroine does not know something, isn't able to do something, passes through trials, and at a certain point they become their full selves. And while that does make fantastic stories, it is not actually what happens in our lives from day to day because it's not like you become your true self and then transcend the the, the credits don't roll the book isn't closed there's still then another um another bit of life and another challenge and another thing you don't know and another um uh, experience to go through and i think that the to me the, the hugest thing is this uh this realization that the journey is the destination, which is again such a cliche. I think with a lot of spirituality for me, and with a lot of improvisation, you can you can write the core messages on the back of a postcard, but then you spend your entire life uh, working to embody and truly understand the richness and complexity of those messages. And you're not so that idea that you're uh, you're meditating or you're improvising or you're looking to live not you're looking to do those things for the experience in and of themselves rather than in trying rather than trying to attain something because if you should attain something in that case you've just got to start again and that makes it worse because that meant the thing you've been working with for the whole time was pointless because there's just a it's like the mountain, the mountain, <laughs> and the mountain and all that thing. yeah i love what you said so about you could you could write the core messages on the back of a postcard, but we spend our lives in, in embodying and, and living that. And mm. I think I think that word in, embody is is really important in both spirituality and improvisation, isn't really? it? I think often often there's a sense of somehow spirituality being about transcending the worldly or transcending the bodily. And in my experience, it's been pretty much the reverse of that. The most profound, most powerful experiences have been coming right into the, to the rawness and messiness and viscerality of, of my experience. Absolutely, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and I, th and I think there's something then about how improvisation in a sense demonstrates to us the okayness of that isn't mm. it i mean i i've got <clears throat> fairly limited experience of improvisation but i remember one of the first times i did it i found myself standing in this circle in the middle of this circle of people 
making up a song on the spot as she, it, mm -hmm. she described about shopping and buying chocolate cake you know had you said to me half an hour before the class started that that would have been happening I would have you know I would have completely said I don't sing you know that that's that's not going to happen mm -hmm. and yet there's something about tapping into as you said re releasing or discovering stuff that is in there that sits underneath that set of thoughts that say this is what I can do this is what I can't do this is what I should do this is what I shouldn't do and I think there's something so freeing in that which helps us to to then be with our deeper personal experience in a different way yeah absolutely and I think a, a huge part of the ability to release those uh, expectations or pre, uh, preconceptions for me is about the communal experience with other people. I, in terms of spirituality, um, I don't believe in uh, a higher power, a thing outside. Supernatural seems to me like a, a circularity thing because if it's if it's supernatural, it's outside the rules, then it creates a new set of rules and it can't be supernatural. But for me, the, the, the huge thing, I, I'd be willing to bet that the reason why you were able to um, sing a song in front of people when you never expected to be able to do that would be because, because of the other people in the room. And to me, the, the spiritual element of uh, improvisation, the spiritual element of, of life and of living is about losing yourself in the other person or people who you are communing with it's about the idea that, that um love rather than being something passive something which just happens to you like a um like a rom-com again nothing wrong with a rom-com they're wonderful to watch um but that love is a constant um a constant returning to the process of accepting the people that you are with and if you accept the people you're with you are also being accepted and that that breaking down of the boundaries of the skull, that creation of um, a, a set of temporary community, whether that be temporary for the sake of your show or temporary for the sake of half an hour workshop or temporary for the sake of uh, just a, a conversation as we're having right now. Um, to me, that, that shifts the terror of inadequacy from am I doing it right? Is it, am, I getting it, um, am I getting it right? Am I doing the things which will be helpful to what does this collective experience need? I don't judge you, you don't judge me. We're simply trying to do something together. And that, um, uh, I'm gonna pronounce his name horribly, but um, Tiksa Mahali, the, the guy who wrote Flow, um, talks about that in a really, really beautiful way, that the, 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 loss of the, the loss of the individual ego in the process which is happening. And there's a couple of people who wrote about group flow after him. So I think that that, that sense of community and sharedness, and again, here's me, here's me sounding like a, a a grouchy old man the the sense of connection community and, and and shared human experience is something which is very much under under attack with uh, technology and social media and all those kind of things and returning to our ability to just be entirely present in the room with someone doing something together is weirdly sort of subversive uh, in uh, <laughs> it's, it's weirdly like now it's a it's an attack on something isn't it yeah, I I love that you brought this up. I mean, I think it's an attack on several things, isn't it? It's an attack on a hierarchy. Mm. It? Because as we know, in that space, no, there might be people who, like you, who know the ropes who are leading the workshop, but there's no sense of better or worse in that, is there? Just as in my, <clears throat> in my groups, when people gather to share, it's really about a sense of communion mm. and complete equality in that, that sharing that we're bringing something amazingly unique each of us are bringing ourselves in a in a, in a gloriously unique way mm. and yet there's no sense of better or worse in that and i think the the other thing that's subversive is it's subversive is actually not playing into those in a sense ref, stepping away from playing into those inag inadequacies mm. You know that in itself, I think, is really subversive when we're turning it from from a, essentially I into into we. Mm. Uh, uh, again, a bit of a cliche, but as you say, we've both experienced forming the formation of deep bonds coming about in a very short space of time, simply through the activity that that everybody's engaged in in a way that couldn't happen, I think, within the normal course of social conduct. Absolutely. You know, that people, people come in, and I've experienced that both in, uh, you know, 
spiritual gatherings and, and in improvisation that suddenly you, you're in it together and it's, be, it's beyond the whole is greater than the sum of the parts essentially yes. isn't it absolutely and, and the more the more time you spend in that kind of context the ability to uh, extend the boundaries of the, of the ego extend the boundaries of the self to include all the other people that that is a skill which in, in itself can be learned and you're you're right that um of course you can practice improvisation, you can get better at improvisation. I've been doing it the best part of 15 years and um, uh, I flatter myself that I've, I've got some skills, but, um, uh, and, and there are people who are newer to it and find it very challenging to do that. But one of the, the biggest skills is just to, is just to open up that self and to allow that to be a, a collective thing. And again, after a while, um, everything forms part of the practice. That's something which is not just in an improvisation class or in a show or in a, um, a teaching context, which is something which can be in any form of uh, any form of life context. And whether you're with someone who is aware of those kind of things or not, that form of connection is a, a, an incredibly important and, and useful skill. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jules, I know we could go on talking for <laughs> loads longer because this is, this is such interesting stuff. Thank you so much and really look forward to seeing you at our, our weekend, our waking up weekend, the yeah, first weekend of June. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Fiona. Yeah, thanks a lot. Great. I will stop the recording. <clears throat>